we want to find the greatest real number that is less than the length of the square of a diagonal for all of the rhombi that satisfy the problem statement. Since they don't specify which diagonal this is, we'll choose the smallest diagonal BD. Let's briefly review hyperbolas. The hyperbola in the problem statement is centered at the origin, so we'll draw the axes, and then we'll draw a pair of asymptotes. Finally, I'll sketch the hyperbola itself. The curves of the hyperbola gradually approach the asymptotes, but they never cross them. So as x and y approach plus or minus infinity, our hyperbola starts to look more and more like the lines that are the asymptotes. We can see that in the equation for the hyperbola. We'll first multiply both sides by 120 to get rid of the denominators, and then we'll isolate 5y squared. With this equation, notice that as x takes on more extreme values, x squared gets very big, especially in comparison to 120. So what happens is that 5y squared on the left-hand side can be approximated by 6x squared as x takes on very large values. Solving for y with this approximation, we get y is equal equal to plus or minus the square root of 6 over 5 times x. We have two slopes for our two asymptote lines. We'll call m1 the positive square root of 6 fifths, and m2 will be the negative square root of 6 fifths. With a positive slope, that means this has a slope of m1, and this is the line with a slope of m2. If bd is the diagonal of our rhombus, it's going to connect the two parts of our hyperbola. In doing so, it must also cross these asymptotes since the hyperbola never will. And since the rhombus is also centered at the origin, the diagonals are also going to pass through the origin. So I'm going to draw BD like this. Let's let M be the slope of this line segment BD. In order to connect the two parts of this hyperbola, the slope of BD must be between the slopes of M1 and M2. So I'll write this inequality here. We can abbreviate this by writing that the absolute value of m is less than the square root of 6 fifths, and let's square both sides. Our rhombus has a second diagonal, ac, and since the diagonals of our rhombus are perpendicular, it's going to be perpendicular to diagonal bd. This means that the slope of this diagonal is going to be the negative reciprocal of the slope of bd. And again, this diagonal is going to cross our two asymptotes to join the two parts of the hyperbola. So we have this other slope is between the slopes of our two asymptotes. We'll rewrite this as an absolute value and square both sides and solve for m squared. So now we have an upper and lower bound on m squared. Let's see if we can express bd squared in terms of m. Returning to our diagram, by the symmetry of the rhombus and the hyperbola, if our point D has coordinates x and y, then point B has coordinates negative x and negative y, and we'll label the origin O. And we also have that our points B and D are on our line that passes through BD, and they're on the hyperbola. The line that passes through B and D, since it passes through the origin, can be written like this, where MS has the bounds that we found earlier. And we have the equation for the hyperbola that we found earlier. So first, let's substitute for y in our hyperbola equation, and we'll solve for x squared. We can do the same thing, this time substituting for x squared in our equation. x over here is y over m. And then we'll solve for y squared. Looking back at our graph, we have that the distance from b to d is twice the distance from d to the origin, squaring both sides. And do is the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. So it has length x squared plus y squared. So we're looking for all values of bd squared that are greater than this. We can now use our values of x squared and y squared that we found and substitute. When we simplify, we get this expression. To minimize bd squared, we're going to need to minimize this part of the fraction. This will be easier to evaluate if we can get rid of the m squared in the numerator. So I'll start by multiplying by 5 over 5 so I can match the coefficient of m squared in the denominator. This gives me 5m squared plus plus 5 in the numerator. Then to match the 6, I'm going to subtract 11 and add 11 in the numerator. This is going to give me negative 6 plus 5m squared plus 11. And then if I factor out a negative 1, I get the same factor in the denominator. This first part of the fraction here is negative 1 over 5, and then we're left with 11 in the numerator. Since we want to minimize this expression, we're going to maximize this part of the denominator. And recall that we had an upper and lower 
lower bound on m squared. So we'll choose an m squared that's just bigger than 5 6. Let's go back to our expression for the square of BD in terms of m squared. Since BD squared is strictly greater than this expression, we'll choose m is equal to 5 6 and we'll substitute. Simplifying, our answer is 480. If you'd like me to solve any other math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.